Hello, welcome to worksheet number 26. Here we talk about volumes by cylindrical shells. Uh, this corresponds to textbook section 5.3. In this section, we'll discuss an alternate way to find volume by, of a solid generated by rotating a region. So last one, last section, we, we looked at finding a volume by looking at the cross-section. And we see a circle of cross-section. We find the area of circle using the fact, fact that it's pi r squared. Here we're going to subdivide our solid into cylindrical shells. So here I'm going to highlight cylindrical shells. Basically, it's like uh, Pringles. I don't know if you've seen like a Pringles can container, or you can think of a can of soda. Uh, what geometric shape do we get when you unfold cylindrical shell? So look at think of a can without the top and bottom. It's just side of the can. So if you kind of cut it and unfold it. It's going to be kind of weird, but if I kind of cut this part, unfold it, it's just going to be a, a rectangular shape. So if you have a piece of paper, just roll it, it becomes a circle on the top and the bottom, and then it's a straight line like this. So it becomes a shell, right? So which is kind of weird, it's like it's a square, but then when you fold it, then it just becomes a circle, right? So, so it becomes basically a rectangular shape, a rectangle. And what is the area of the shape? Okay, so we need two information. There is radius r, and then height is h. So imagine this. So this isn't part where it's going to be kind of weird because this is circle that comes from here. So you have this part. You're just rotating. You're just rolling it to make a circle. So this length circumference is same as this length here. So this will be two pi r. And then it's going to be h. So the area of the rectangle is going to be 2 pi r h. Right. So we're going to kind of, we're going to split our solid into these shells. And then we'll just look at the area of the shells and we'll just integrate that to get the volume. So instead of look at the cross section, which becomes circle, when you look at cylinder, it becomes rectangle when you unfold it. Right. So area of this is going to be 2 pi r times h. So I'm going to have to remember that. Let's look at volume of solid. We have a region uh, bounded by this x-axis and the vertical line. And then it's, we're generating the, the solid by revolving this region about y-axis. So let's see. This is kind of strange case, but it's not strange per se, but this is something new. So you have a graph here, your function. I have this region. I'm going to rotate it about y-axis. So y-axis is here. So this point, I'm going to rotate about this. This point, I'm going to rotate it like this. This point, I'm going to rotate it like this. Right. So kind of like what we did before, except now I'm going to look at things differently. So instead of a cutting, before we, we are rotating things about y-axis, we cross like this. Look at the cross section. right? So here, we're going to just look at things differently. I'm going to look at it as a can. Because this is rotated, you're going to see can like this, right? So I'm going to break down my re uh, solid in terms of these shells, which is basically the can container. Of so that's one of these, right? So again, radius r is going to be this part. That's going to be basically this part, right? So if I'm looking at here, this part is going to be the radius. So this length is going to be the same as circumference of this. And the height of the cylinder is going to be just this thing, right? So that's going to be the function height, and this is going to be the radius. So, And then if you look at the thickness of the shell, it's going to be like this much, so it's going to be dx. So I'm going to have to remember dx is going to be the thickness. That's delta x, right? So my integral is going to be respect to dx, and then I'm going to have to do this area. Right, let's see. So differences uh, difference between this and what we learned before. If you are rotating about y-axis, then we're doing d before we did it is dy when we did the washer's cross-sectional method. Uh, here we're doing it with dx. So for the cylindrical shell method we're going to find it by using dx when it's rotated about y-axis. So it's like opposite of what we did before. 
For the cross-section, the outer and inner, inner circles come from the same function. This is when we can't really do sh the cross-section method. So let's go back here. If I was going to do cross-section method, uh, it's going to be weird looking. I'm going to cut it like this. So this is going to be inner circle. This is going to be outer circle. Well, inner circle, radius of inner circle comes from this function. And inner, uh, radius of outer circle comes from this function, which is basically the same function. So how am I going to, because it's going to be outer function minus the inner function. So it's going to be 0, but I know it's not going to be 0. So when that's the case, when you do cross-sectional method, like a previous section, this will not work because, like, wait, this is the same function. So that's not going to happen. And then also there are functions that are difficult, impossible to solve in terms of y. Right? So because, again, like if, our doing, if I'm doing cross-section method or the CD or wash method that we talked about last, uh, in the last worksheet, if I'm doing it this way, then I have to do in dy. But what if I can't write this function in terms of dy? Why? Then it's going to be another hard one to do it that way. So this is just give you the new method, the cylindrical shell method, gives you alternate way to find the integral. OK, so here, if you look at the formula here, eventually we have that. It's like, where did they come up with 2 pi x and then f of x? Well, 2 pi r was the 2 pi r was the length of this part. So 2 pi x, because x is here, that's going to be the radius. So maybe I should label that. So that's x here. This is x. So there's 2 pi x i star i star i star. So that's some random sample point. So x is from the length between this and this. So that will be the radius. And when you unfold it, there'll be the length of the bottom, 2 pi x. So that's where they have that. How about the height? That's just function f. So this is height. So that's this part is f of x i star, f of x i star, f of x i star. Again, i star is some random sample point. So you just plug that into f, that gives you the height. So that's why I have that. And delta x, that's the thickness. We're going along the x-axis, so that's that. So when you convert that into the integral, basically 2 pi x star becomes 2 pi x, f of x star becomes f of x, and dx is delta x. And it goes for a to b. All right, let's try some examples here. Let's do exact example 2. Consider the region bounded by the curve y is equal to sine x squared. So this is how the graph looks. And the x-axis. So graph goes like this, x axis like this, so this is the region R, label that, on the interval 0 to pi, here it is typo, it should be radical pi, not pi, so it's radical pi, sorry about that, um, okay, so this region, and the next axis, so this is region R, now rotate that uh, about y axis, so it's going to be like this, so like take a sample point, it goes, it's going to go around y-axis, so it's going to go like this. Right? This point, go around y-axis, so it's going to be like this. So here's the graph here. And we're going to split, try to f split this re uh, solid by uh, shell. So shell is going to look like this. Right? Again, just to kind of, my first instinct was, can I just do cross-section like the previous section? So if I look at cross-section, just random cross-section, there's an inner circle, there's an outer circle. Again, outer circle, inner circle, they come from the same function. So if I do outer minus square minus inner, I'm going to get 0. So that's not going to work. Again, so it's like try to do shell method, which is a cross-section or the CD. A cross section. Then, since I am doing a uh, rotating about y axis, it's going to be dy, right? That means I have to rewrite this in terms of y. So I have to solve it, like, I have to rewrite this into x is equal to something, something with the y in it. It's going to be kind of hard. I have to look inverse sine and then square root. So it's just going to be difficult to do that. And we don't know what to do with it. So for two different ways, it's going to be hard to do it with the shell method, the 
the previous like from the previous section first inner circle and outer circle they come from the same function and b like how am i supposed to solve it in terms of x it's going to be like square root of inverse sine of y we don't know how to deal with that so that doesn't work hard to do so basically now i'm going to try to do the new method which is the let me move up there here a little bit shell method so try shell so now i'm going to split my solid into these shells so if i pick point here there'll be a bigger shell like this if i pick a point here there'll be a smaller shell like this right? so i'm trying to make this mountain by using the cans right put a bunch of cans inside each other then it'll form this mountain thing so first of all i'm going i'm rotating about y axis so my thickness of each can is going to be d delta x which is going to translate to dx which is good because my function is already given in terms of x sine x squared so i can just use that function if i look at this so for example if i look at this particular one x is here so radius is x so again when you unfold it the the base of the rectangle we're going to see is 2 pi x right? so that's that and the height is going to be this so that's f of x that's uh, sine x squared dx and then what's the smallest x value is 0 and then what's the largest x value that's here just that's radical pi so 0 root radical pi All right so that's it so now it's a matter of solving it. Uh, there's a sine x squared and then there's x. 2 pi is just a constant, so I can rewrite it. So okay, radical pi, 2 pi, x sine x squared dx. I can let u to be x squared. I can do u substitution. du is 2x dx. That means 1 half du is dx, x dx. So I'm going to rewrite everything in terms of u, so 2 pi in front. Uh, so I get like this, x dx is du. So write that as d, oops, du. And then sine square is just uh, sine u. So sine u du, and then 1 half, so over 2. So this over 2 comes from 1 half du. So x du is here, and then 1 half is here. OK. And then I have to change the limits of integration. So when now I have to write it in terms of u. So when x is equal to 0, 0 squared is u. So that's just 0. And then when x is radical pi, u is radical pi squared, that'll be just pi. So pi here. So that's pi. Antiderivative cosine is, sine is negative cosine pi zero <coughs> pi times cosine of pi is negative one, so negative that is oops, so one minus and then cosine of cosine of zero is one, so minus minus oops, minus one, so it's two pi. So that'll be my answer, all right? And the next one is when things are kind of same setup, blah, blah, blah. It's rotated about x-axis. Then now I'm going to do it. Now the variable is going to be in terms of y, and then I'm going to do dy. So this is when you're looking, looking at things sideways, when this is rotated about x-axis. So the difference between this and then the formula we saw before is just x and y are switched. So here we are rotating about y axis, and then it's going to be done in, ter done in terms of dx. And when it's rotated about uh, x axis, then for shell method, it's going to be done in terms of dy. Right? So for the cylindrical shell we're doing right now, and then so that's dy, right? So it's just kind of summarize what we did this this worksheet and the previous worksheet 
if you are rotating about x-axis for shell method it's going to be dy so here let me just organize it rotate about x-axis dy and then if I'm doing cross-sectional method then I'm going to do dx and then vice versa for the other method so I'm going to keep that in mind and again I can always kind of imagine and try to draw but this will give you a little hint example 3 we have region bounded by this function. So again, x is equal to 4y squared minus y cubed. Just by just looking at it, if I want to solve y is equal to something in terms of x, I know it's going to be pretty difficult. So I kind of know whenever I do, things is going to be done in dy, right? So there we go. And then find the volume of the shell, uh, volume generated by the revolving d region about x-axis. So x-axis is here. So we'll have this region R. So for example, like this point is going to be rotated about x-axis. Like this point is going to be rotated about x-axis. So basically I'm going to get like, it's going to be like this, right? Okay, so I know it's going to be dy and then my shell. So I want to try to fill this solid by using cylinder. So point is going to be like this. So pick any y to make a little can that's opening sideways. So this is our typical shell. Right? Given any y, you just go up there. That's going to be the height of the shell. Then you rotate it. So that's going to be done in dy because that's going to be the thickness. So y goes from 0 to 4. So it's 2 pi y times the height which is this is determined by the function which is that function right so it'll be 4y squared minus y cubed and it's better here let me just rewrite it 0 4 2 pi y 4y squared minus y cubed dy that'll be 2 pi is just constant and then I can multiply these, so 4y cubed minus y4 dy, that's 2 pi, y cubed minus 1 fifth y fifth, and then 4, 0, and you get 5, 12 pi over 5. All right, all right, let's look at the next question here, example 4. Some of these kind of questions, it's pretty hard to actually evaluate the integral, so here we're going to just practice setting up. So I'm going to change the question. Uh, set up the integral to find the volume of the solid. You don't have to actually evaluate it. And let's actually look at part B. I think it's more interesting or more difficult. Set up the integral to evaluate, to find the volume. All right. So we have bunch of graphs here y is equal to 3x over x minus 1 that's this graph this is vertical line x is equal to 9 so when you have x is equal to some number that gives you a vertical line so this line and then y is equal to 6 again then we have y is equal to some number that gives you a horizontal line so this is the region we're talking about and just because there are so many lines it's kind of confusing this is y-axis this is x-axis right so I'm going to just use different color for that. Um, I want to revolve this region about line x is equal to 2. So where is x is equal to 2? <coughs> Again, it's x is equal to some number, so it gives you a vertical line. So 2 is right here. So maybe I should use green one. 2 is right here. So I'm going to rotate everything about that. So give me a random point somewhere here. If you rotate about that, it's going to get something like this, right? Give me a random number here it goes it's gonna be like this right so i'm gonna rotate everything about this so like here this is gonna be like this right so if i have to draw the solid it's gonna be like so i have to kind of okay so from two to nine that's seven distance of seven so it's gonna be a distance of seven one two three four so negative five so this is how far this point is gonna be how far it goes here is seven distance so negative five so my shape is gonna be like this right 
and then it's going to be like this, and then it's going to be like that. <coughs> okay, so here uh, I'm going to set it up. So here I can do cross section, I can do shell, it's just because we're doing shell. I can kind of try cross section later, but here I'm going to try to do it by shell. So uh, I'm rotating about this line, which is basically looks like y axis. So that's basically y axis, right? So this is x is equal to some number, it's a vertical line. So that's basically a y axis. So I'm using cylindrical shell method, and it's a rotate about y axis basically, then I'm going to do dx, right? Next step is I'm going to just pick a random, like a sample point, and see what kind of shell I get. So let's say x is equal to, I'm going to pick x is equal to 5 here. So that line, if it gets rotated, it's like that's 1, 2, that's 1, 2, 3 units from the, the axis of rotation. So I go 1, 2, 3 here. So that's that. So that's going to be the shell I'm going to be working with. Right? So I pick some random point, x is equal to 5. Then this gets rotated this way, right? So this is a shell I'm going to see. So now I just have to figure out what is the surface area of the shell. Okay, so we know that the formula is 2 pi r and then height. Okay, and then x goes from what's the smallest x is 2 and then biggest x is 9, right? So x goes from 2 to 9. Let's see how it works. So it's radius is from this distance so this is where things get pretty tricky when you don't rotate about x axis or y axis when you're rotating something else i have to do like adjust my radius a little bit so when x is equal to five radius is only three because i'm going from here to here is only three units right so i don't want to say two pi x because that's kind of misleading because the radius is not five so it's five is here the radius is only this much, so it's 2 less than 5, right? So I'm going to have to go 2 pi x minus 2. The reason is when x is 5, radius is only 3, because I'm rotating about 2, right? So radius gets a little shorter. It gets shorter than by 2. Okay, so 2 pi radius times height. Again, the function was, was uh, this graph, the function 3x 3x x minus 1 so we will try to figure out the height of the height of the shell so I can kind of argue well isn't it just top function minus the bottom function I can say that so top function is 6 that was line y is equal to 6 bottom function is this curve which is 3x minus uh, 3 over, over 3x over x minus 1 so I can say 6 minus 3x over x minus 1 so that's how I'll set up. So again, like, why do I have to do it this way? Because this height of the shell is bounded by this function and this function. So how do you figure out this much? Well, it's top minus the bottom. It gives you the distance between these two. So I got that. So there are some parts that have to be super careful, right? Um, but this is how I'll set up. And that's it. You don't have to solve it. We'll just set up and miss it. And I'm going to have you finish the rest of it. Like, again, for this one, you can set up an example five, I'm gonna also have you set up, but this one is actually, you can find the integral. So the next, the last example, you're gonna have you finish the whole thing, okay? And that's it.